Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real-life American English. Today we're going to learn to avoid some common mistakes, so let's get started. First, this is not a mistake. Ah, it's snowing. Did you guys notice the mistake? Now let's watch a clip from a video that I posted on my YouTube channel last year. Another important form of connected speech happens when we have two s sounds, one at the end of the first word, and then another s sound at the beginning of the next word. I didn't notice any mistake because there's no mistake. You can say it's snowing. You don't have to link the words. It's more common to link the words and say it's snowing. But if you're talking slow, you can separate the words and say it's snowing. It's not a mistake. It's fine. Let's hear some native speakers saying it's snowing and they separate the words and they don't link the sounds because it's not a mistake. It's um, snowing here today. As you can see, it's snowing pretty good here this morning at the care site. First of all, I hear that it's uh, snowing again in uh, Denver. The Barton Springs is the same temperature whether it's 105 out or whether it's snowing out, and I've been there when it was snowing. So, it's snowing here. And this is a mistake. What's the matter? I don't know. I'm coughing, and I've got runny nose. I cannot say, I've got runny nose. Nose is a countable noun, so I need an article. A. Uh, a uh, runny nose. I have to use the article a uh, because the word nose is a countable noun. It's correct to say, I've got a runny nose. Or I can say he. He's got a runny nose. Remember, I can say he has a runny nose. Or I can say he has, contraction, he's got a runny nose. They both mean the same thing. You're expressing possession. Let's practice. Does he have a runny nose? That's right. He's got a runny nose. This is also not correct. A strange thing happened to me at the restaurant last night. Would you like another slice of pizza? Oh, no, thanks. I'm full. <laughs> say it again. Say it again. I'm full. <laughs> oh, you said fool instead of fool. Fool means stupid or crazy. I cannot say fool means stupid or crazy. First, it's countable, so I have to use an article, a fool. A fool means stupid or crazy? No, a fool means a stupid person. It doesn't mean crazy. It just means stupid. A fool means a stupid person. And pronunciation, it's not fool, it's fool. Use the dark L at the end. Link the sounds oo with the dark L. It makes an extra sound. Listen. Fool. Fool. A fool is a stupid person, not a crazy person. And use the article a, uh, a fool. Let's practice. What is a fool? Is a fool a stupid person? That's right. A fool is a stupid person. This is also not correct. If you want to see the stars at night, should you go to desert or dessert? Should you go to desert? We have to use an article. You can say the desert or a desert. But we need an article. What's the difference? A desert is one in general. And the desert is usually a specific one, but not always. I can say go to the desert for a general desert too. The point is they're both correct. I can say a desert to speak more in general or I can say the desert. The desert is the most common option, but we have to use an article. So the question is, should you go to the desert? And the answer is no, you shouldn't go to the desert. The weather is too hot. It's too hot in the desert. I think you shouldn't go to the desert. Let's practice. Should he go to the desert? That's right, he shouldn't go to the desert because it's too hot. It doesn't rain in Desert or dessert? And I cannot say it doesn't rain in desert. Again, we need articles. It doesn't rain in the desert. Let's practice. Does it rain in the desert? That's right. It doesn't rain in the desert. Well, not very much. This is also not correct. 
is loose. It's very big for me. It's not fit. I cannot say it's not fit. In this case, fit is a verb. I have to use doesn't and don't with verbs. So if I talk about my shoes, I can say my shoes don't fit. The size is not right. The size is not correct. The shoes don't fit. But if it's singular, I use doesn't. Example, the jacket. The jacket doesn't fit. The size is not correct. I cannot say it's not fit. Because fit is a verb, I use the negatives, don't or doesn't. The shoes don't fit and the jacket doesn't fit. The size is not correct. Let's practice. Do the shoes fit? That's right, the shoes don't fit. Does the jacket fit? That's right, the jacket doesn't fit either. This is also not correct. But if you're thinking about 10 years from now, you're thinking about future or feature? Future. You're thinking about future? We have to use an article. We use the article the, the future. So it's correct to say you're thinking about the future. With future, use the article the. Example, he's thinking about the future. I can also use possessive, his future. He's thinking about his future. Or with the, he's thinking about the future. Let's practice. What is he thinking about? Is he thinking about the future? That's right, he's thinking about the future. This is also not correct. Be careful, cop and cop. What was the difference? Lesson again, lesson carefully. These words are pronounced differently. The first word is cup, cup. We have to make the short sound, uh, uh, with a closed position, uh, uh, cup, cup. And the second word is cop. It's more open, cop, like hot and stop cop. So it should be cup, cop. Listen again? He means listen again. The word is pronounced listen, not lesson. We need a short I sound like this is. L -l listen. So it should be cup, cop. Listen again. Let's play that clip again. Be careful. Cop and cop. What was the difference? Lesson again, lesson carefully. Again, pronunciation. Cup, cop. Listen again. This is also not correct. Now imagine me saying, yesterday I was talking to a cup. We don't pronounce the word yesterday, yesterday. It's pronounced yesterday. We need the er sound like burger. Er. How do we make this sound? You take your tongue and you put it back. The back of the tongue against the back of the mouth. You make a voice here. Er. The tongue is in the middle. It's not touching the top. It's not touching the bottom. It's just in the middle. Make the voice. Er. Yesterday. Yesterday. Not yesterday, but yester. Yesterday. This is also not correct. The next pair of confusing words. Receipt versus recipe. Now pay attention because this can lead to a very embarrassing situation. First, pay attention to the pronunciation. Recit. Recit. Is there a P? No. You do not pronounce the P because it's silent. Recit. Recit versus recipe. 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 Now, recit is a piece of paper that shows that you have paid for something. For example, I bought this iPad and I have received the receipt. We don't pronounce the word receipt, receipt. We don't use the short I like this is. We use a long E like green beans. The word is pronounced receipt, receipt. We're putting the stress on the second syllable. So it's important to pronounce it correctly. Receipt, receipt. Not receipt, but receipt. And remember, the P is silent. Don't pronounce that P. Receipt. This is a receipt. So I have my receipt. Let's practice. Do you have your receipt? That's right, I have my receipt. This is also not correct. If you put up with something or if you put up with somebody, it means you tolerate without complaining. He's always complaining about everything. 
but his parents put up with him. I mean, he's annoying, but his parents say, ah, oh, that's our child, what should we do? Oh, let's just tolerate. I cannot say let's just tolerate. When I use the verb tolerate, I need an object. I can say it, let's just tolerate it. Or I can talk about a person and say him, let's just tolerate him. But I need an object. Example, your neighbors are very loud. What do you do? Do you call the police or do you just tolerate it? Do you just tolerate them? So if you're talking about behavior, you can say it. And if you're talking about people, you can say them. But we need an object. You just tolerate it. Or you just tolerate them. Let's practice. What do you do when your neighbors are loud? Do you just tolerate it? Very good. What do you do when your neighbors are loud? Do you just tolerate them? Very good. This is also not correct. He's an old friend. We hadn't seen each other for a long time, you know, since I drifted off. Drift off? What? We I drifted off? Drifted off means something completely different. So I can't say he's an old friend. I hadn't seen him for a long time. You know, since I drifted off. He means since we drifted apart. When you don't see someone very often, and the relationship ends because you don't see each other very much, we say drift apart, not drift off. So if you don't see your friend for a long time and you don't stay in contact, you don't call him, your friend doesn't call you, use drift apart. You drift apart. But you can't say I drift apart. You need two people. We drift apart. Or in the past, we drifted apart. Example, they were friends, but they stopped talking to each other. They drifted apart. Let's practice. What happened? They don't talk anymore. Did they drift apart? That's right. They drifted apart. So what is drift off? It means something completely different. It means when you fall asleep. Example, he was sitting on the sofa watching TV and he fell asleep. I can say he drifted off. Drift in the present, in the past drifted. He was watching TV and he drifted off. The idea, he fell asleep. Let's practice. What happened? He was sitting on the sofa watching TV. And what happened? Did he drift off? That's right. He drifted off. The idea, he fell asleep. This is also not correct. The next one is to harp up about something. Harp up. What does it mean? Well, to harp up about something means to continue talking about something again and again and again and again and again and five again. hours later again and again and again that is to harp up about something it's very annoying isn't it i cannot say harp up or harp up about this does not exist in english the expression is harp on not harp up you harp on something or you harp on about something. It means you keep talking about it and other people don't like it. You harp on something or you harp on about something, but you cannot say harp up. Let's listen to the example. Look at this example. Can you stop harping up about how great Miranda looked at the party? Can you stop harping up about how great she looked at the party? So here's my friend saying, whoa, did you see Miranda? Whoa, Miranda was amazing. Whoa, I like Miranda. Whoa, did you see her boyfriend? Whoa, she was amazing. And I said, oh, come on, dude. Would you stop harping up about her? This is not correct. I cannot say you can't stop harping up about how great Miranda is looking. Stop harping up about her? Again, this does not exist in English. It's harp on. So it's correct to say, can you stop harping on? about how great Miranda looked at the party. So example, he was harping on about how great she looked. He kept talking about it and he was annoying other people. They didn't like it. That's when we use this expression. He kept harping on about how great she looked. Let's practice. Was he harping on about how great she looked? That's right. He was harping on about how great she looked. He kept talking about it and annoying other people. This is also not correct. Now let's begin. In this lesson, we're going to talk about three 
most common small talk topics. I cannot say we're going to talk about three most common small talk topics. When I say three most common, I need an article. I have to say the, the three most common small talk topics. So it's correct to say we're going to talk about the three most common small talk topics. So remember, when you say most, use an article. The most common, the two most common, the three most common, the four most common, etc. Use the article the. This is also not correct. And hit download button. I cannot say hit download button. I need an article. It's specific in this case, so I need to say the. Hit the download button. Hit the download button. I cannot say hit download button. This is also not correct. Then there is every chance that the other person would talk about pizza and Italy or pasta and food that are related to Italy. Pizza and pasta? These words are pronounced differently. The first word is not pizza. It's pizza. We cannot use the short I sound like this is. We have to use a long E sound like green beans. The word is pronounced pizza. P, the long E. Pizza. And pasta? We don't say pasta. Not in America. We say pasta. Use the short ah sound like hot and stop. Pa, pasta. So the words are pronounced pizza and pasta. Not pizza and pasta. Pizza and pasta. Example, I love Italian food. I love pizza and pasta. What about you? Do you like Italian food? Do you like pizza and pasta? Very good. This is also not correct. If the other person is from another town or another country, you could say, how is the weather in your town? Or how is the weather in your country? I cannot say another country. The word is not pronounced country. It's pronounced country. We don't use the U uh sound like foot and book. We use the U uh sound like cup and up and cut. This is a relaxed sound. Uh, cu, country, country. And we see the TR makes a ch, ch sound like chicken plus the R, tree. Together, con, tree. So pronunciation, another country. Example, I live in the United States. What about you? Do you live in another country or do you live in the same country? Very good. So write it in the comments. Tell me what country you're from. Tell me what country you live in. Write it in the comments. This is also not correct. Now, in many types of extreme weather conditions, you will hear a sound like and you will see a light in the sky. What is that called? Well, the light is called a lightning and the sound is called a thunder. I cannot say the light is called a lightning and the sound is called a thunder. I cannot use an article with lightning. I cannot say a lightning. I cannot use an article with thunder. I cannot say a thunder. These words are not countable. Do not use articles with these words. So the light is called lightning and the sound is called thunder. No a lightning and no a thunder. Keep watching to the end of this video to practice with the difference between lightning and thunder and how to count them if you need to. This is also not correct. Number one is mild. But what is a mild weather? I cannot say what is a mild weather. The word weather is not countable. So that means I cannot use an article and say a weather or a mild weather. It's just weather or mild weather. So the question is, what is mild weather? And the answer, mild weather is weather that is not too severe. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's mild. It's mild weather. I prefer mild weather. What about you? Do you prefer mild weather? That's right. I prefer mild weather. This is also not correct. Opposite of a gust of wind is breeze. I cannot say opposite of a gust of wind is breeze. Why? Because opposite needs an article, the. I have to say the opposite. I cannot say opposite. I need the. The opposite of a gust of wind is breeze. 
Breeze is a countable noun. I need the article a. A breeze. Because it's countable, I can have one breeze or two breezes. That's why I need the article a. A breeze. So it's correct to say the opposite of a gust of wind is a breeze. Because a gust of wind is strong wind. And a breeze is light wind. Light wind that feels good, that's pleasant. They are opposites. So again, the opposite of a gust of wind is a breeze. Let's practice. What is the opposite of a gust of wind? That's right. The opposite of a gust of wind is a breeze. This is also not correct. Out of a sudden, everything is okay, but suddenly... I cannot say out of a sudden, the sky was clear. Out of a sudden? The expression is all of a sudden. All of a sudden. Not out of a sudden, but all. All of a sudden. All of a sudden, the sky was clear. It happened suddenly. So I use the expression all of a sudden. Let's practice. What happened? Did the sky change? Was the sky clear all of a sudden? That's right. The sky changed. The sky was clear all of a sudden. Or I can change the order and say, all of a sudden, the sky was clear. They're both correct. We also do not say this in America. In the morning, we might expect some light showers and drizzle, so you might want to take your brolly with you. Brolly? What's a brolly? I had no idea what a brolly was when I heard this, so I had to Google it, and I found out it's British. They say brolly in British. I had never heard it before. It's an umbrella. We don't say brolly in America. We call them umbrellas. This is not a brolly. This is an umbrella. If you say the word brolly to an American, they will not know what you're talking about. Also, don't say this. For example, it's just spitting a bit, but it's not too bad. You don't need your brolly. When it's spitting outside, do you need to take your brolly? It's spitting outside, you need to take your brolly? In America, we do not say it's spitting outside. This is spitting. We do not use this to talk about rain. We say it's raining a little, it's drizzling, it's sprinkling, but we do not say it's spitting. And again, don't say brolly, not in America. We say it's sprinkling outside. You need to take your umbrella. Let's practice. Is it sprinkling outside? Do you need to take your umbrella? That's right, it's sprinkling outside. You need to take your umbrella. This is also not correct. It starts raining very heavily for 15 seconds. This is called shower. I cannot say it's called shower. Shower is countable. I can say a shower. But when I say a shower, I think of this, take a shower. But if you're talking about rain, it's more common to make it plural with an S and say showers. So it's correct to say these are called showers, referring to rain. You can say these are called showers. But if I use the article a and say this is called a shower, I think about this. This is called a shower. And these are called showers, referring to rain. Let's practice. What is this called? Is this called a shower? That's right, this is called a shower. And what about these? Are these called showers? That's right, these are called showers. Talking about rain. This is also not correct. And next is when you cannot see the distance very clearly. Why? Because it's foggy. Foggy. What does it mean? When there is a thick mist in the air, that white thing like a cloud, it's in the air and you cannot see very clearly, that's foggy. For example, I'm not going to drive today because it's foggy and it's dangerous. The storm will last until night when it will clear up and become foggy. It will become foggy? What is foggy? He means foggy. It's a different sound. I can't say foggy. We don't use the uh sound like cup and up. We use the aw uh sound like call ball, log, and dog. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. The sound is back here. Fog. Foggy. 
it will become foggy. Example, it's very foggy today. What do you think? Is it very foggy today? That's right, it's very foggy today. Not foggy, but foggy. Also, don't say this. And now it is time for the last idiom of today. Bell the cat. What does it mean to bell the cat? This idiom means to do something difficult or risky that can benefit a group of people. What do I mean? Well, imagine you and your colleagues are not satisfied with your salary. So one of you will have to talk to the boss. Now, the boss might get angry and fire the person who's complaining. Get out! So it is a risky task, but whoever does it, the whole group will benefit. And now, who will bell the cat? It means who will do it? Who will bell the cat? I think you should bell the cat. Boss likes you the most. I don't want to lose my job. Why don't you bell the cat? Don't use the expression bell the cat. I looked for it and looked for it and I found one example because nobody says it. It's an old, old expression. Don't use it. People won't know what you're talking about. Do not use the expression bell the cat. It's very old. So keep watching until the end to learn how to use lightning and thunder correctly. How to count them and how to use them in a non-countable way. Today we're going to practice with thunder and lightning and learn to avoid some mistakes using these words. Let's get started. First, let's look at thunder. Pronunciation, the TH makes the sound with air. Like thank you and think. Thunder. The U makes a short sound, uh, uh, like cup and up. The, the, thunder. The important thing about thunder is to know that it is not countable. I cannot say a thunder, one thunder, or two thunders. I cannot put an S on this word. It's a non-countable word. So how do you use it? You can say the, the thunder. The thunder was loud last night. Or I can say some, some thunder. We had some thunder last night. Or I can say a lot of. There was a lot of thunder last night. And remember, thunder is what you hear, not what you see. So I hear the thunder. In the past, I heard. I heard the thunder last night. Let's practice. Was the thunder loud last night? That's right. The thunder was loud last night. Did we have some thunder last night? That's right. We had some thunder last night. Was there a lot of thunder? That's right. There was a lot of thunder. Did you hear the thunder last night? That's right. I heard the thunder last night. Can I ever say a thunder? No, but you can say a thunderstorm. Because the word storm is countable. You can have one storm and two storms, so I can say a thunderstorm. Example, there was a big thunderstorm last night. Let's practice. Was there a big thunderstorm last night? That's right. There was a big thunderstorm last night. But what if you really want to count thunder? You want to say one, one thunder. Well, we have a special word for that. Let's take a look. We use this word clap. Like clap. A thunderclap is countable. I can have one thunderclap or two thunderclaps. This is how we count thunder. You can also say a clap of thunder. Example, I heard a loud clap of thunder. That's how we count the word thunder, by using clap. Either a thunderclap, one word, or a clap of thunder. Example, I heard a loud thunderclap. Or I heard a loud clap of thunder. Let's practice. Did you hear a loud thunderclap? That's right. I heard a loud thunderclap. You want to emphasize that it's one. Did you hear a loud clap of thunder? That's right. I heard a loud clap of thunder. That's one. 
Now let's talk about this word, lightning. Pronunciation, light, ning. Two syllables, lightning. Lightning is also not countable. I cannot say one lightning, a lightning, two lightnings, not countable. So what do we say? We say the lightning, some lightning, or a lot of lightning. And the action is see. You don't hear lightning, you see lightning. In the present, see. In the past, saw. I saw some lightning last night. The lightning was bright. And there was a lot of lightning. Let's practice. Did you see the lightning last night? Very good. That's right. I saw the lightning too. Was the lightning bright? That's right. The lightning was bright. Was there a lot of lightning last night? That's right. There was a lot of lightning last night. But what if you want to count lightning? You want to say it was one, just one. Well, we can do that, but we need a special word. And the word is bolt. Use the long O like old and cold. Bolt with a T at the end. A lightning bolt is one. One lightning is called a lightning bolt because we cannot say a lightning. You have to say a lightning bolt or you can say a bolt of lightning. They mean the same thing. They mean one. I saw a lightning bolt. Or I saw a bolt of lightning. Let's practice. Did you see a lightning bolt? Very good. I saw a lightning bolt. Did you see a bolt of lightning? That's right. I saw a bolt of lightning. This is how we count lightning. So remember. Thunder and lightning. You hear the thunder and you see the lightning. Remember, neither word is countable. I cannot say one thunder, two thunders. I cannot say one lightning, two lightnings. If you want to count thunder, you can say a thunderclap. And if you want to count lightning, you can say a bolt of lightning. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. And we'll see you next time.